This is the second of two SY3 screencasts looking at Elite Theory. In the first screencast we looked at Classical Elite Theory, which argues that this situation that we can see here, where you've got society controlled by a small elite, is an inevitable feature of all political systems, so it's not something that's going to change. And some Classical Elite Theorists actually argue that it's also a desirable feature. But there's another type of elite theory, called power elite theory, that argues that whilst this situation might exist at the moment, it's something that can be changed, and it's something that is regrettable and deserves to be challenged. Now, power elite theory was first developed by an American sociologist called C. Wright Mills, who wrote a book about the American power elite in 1956. And in this book... Mills was very, very critical of American democracy. He argued that in reality there was a class of military, business and political leaders driven by mutual interests that constituted the power elite. And although this view of the American political system is quite common nowadays, for example, one only needs to think of the criticisms made by the Occupy movement, when C. Wright Mills published his book in 1956, it made him very, very unpopular. This wasn't how most Americans saw their democracy in the 1950s. So this pyramid represents the distribution of power in America according to C. Wright Mills. So at the apex we've got the most powerful group. This is the American power elite which according to C. Wright Mills was made up of three groups. You've got the corporate elite, which are the business leaders in America. You've got the political elite, which is the president and other key members of the executive branch of government. And then you've got the military elite. Underneath the power elite, you've got this middle level, which comprises members of the US Congress, which is their equivalent of the Houses of Parliament, uh, other legislatures, so local government, state government, and also the leaders of pressure groups and other local organisations. And then at the bottom, we've got the great mass of the population, who compared to the power elite, are relatively powerless because they're unorganised, they're exploited, they're apathetic, they're mostly uninterested in politics, which makes it much easier for this cohesive group at the top to control them. Going back to the group at the top of the pyramid, the American power elite, the other controlling group within the American system, although we're talking about three different types of elite, so the political elite represented here by the White House, which is where the US president lives, we've got the Pentagon, which represents the military elite, and then we've got Wall Street, which represents the corporate and financial elite, even though we're talking about three different types of elites, Mills argues that these elites are so interconnected within American society that essentially they come together to form a cohesive, unified group uh, that act together to defend their own self-interests. So, for example, we're talking about individuals that often share a similar social background, so privileged, gone to private school, gone to an uh, elite Ivy League university. They're often also united by ties of friendship and kinship. So these are people that come from a similar social background and tend to have a similar world view. A really excellent film that looks at some of the issues that C. Wright Mills explored in his book is this recent documentary called Why We Fight. And in this documentary... It makes the case that even today there remain really close links between the military elite, the corporate elite and the political elite, what President Eisenhower famously called the military industrial complex. So for example the film highlights the existence of a revolving door which describes the situation where there's a great deal of interchange and overlap between these elites, so company directors sit on government advisory committees, retired generals chair business corporations and so on. So C. Wright Mills was an American sociologist and his book The Power Elite 
was about the American political system, but other sociologists have claimed that there's also evidence for the existence of a power elite inside our own country. A number of sociologists have found that the majority of those who occupy elite positions in Britain are recruited from a small minority of the population and therefore come from highly privileged backgrounds. And this appears to apply to a wide range of British elites, including politicians, judges and company directors. And we're going to briefly look at this book by Williams, which claims that there is a power elite inside Britain. Williams claims that there are three main groups that make up the UK power elite. Firstly, there are the political leaders. Secondly, there are the professional elites. And this refers not just to the traditional professions, such as lawyers and doctors, but also to what Williams calls the new professionals. And these are essentially management consultants whose job is to regulate, administer and monitor the work of other professionals. For example, Williams notes that in one year alone, 2004 to 2005, there were five management consultants who earned no less than £1 billion advising the government. And then lastly, but most importantly, we had the financial and business elites. And Williams regards them as the most powerful part of the British establishment and particularly those people working in the City of London, in the banking and financial services industry, and he suggests that the uh, political and professional elites often have to defer to these financial elites. And there's also evidence of a revolving door in the British political system. So here we have the former Prime Minister, Tony Blair, who now does a variety of jobs, including... Uh, acting as a consultant to the, the world's biggest investment bank, Morgan Stanley. And the political influence of the big investment banks and of the financial services industry is so colossal that according to Nicholas Shackson in his brilliant book Treasure Islands, the British state and the British political system have essentially been captured by the financial services industry. Power elite theory, though, is not without its critics. There are some people who argue that the problem with power elite theory is it overemphasizes the cohesiveness, the unity of elite groups, and that the reality is that elite groups are often very fragmented, that they're often in competition with one another rather than uh, acting as a unified group. And then the other key criticism of power elite theory is this is kind of a conspiracy theory and that the evidence that you've got uh, cohesive elite groups acting in their own self-interest is not necessarily backed up by empirical studies of decision-making. And this would certainly be the main criticism that pluralists would make of this theory.